Okay, this video is going to show you what to set up in order for an outsourced process to work. I call this the preliminary required setup. So if you do outsourced manufacturing in its truest sense where you send multiple parts out or get multiple parts back, not the one-to-one -one ratio that uh, is represented in the outsourced purchase order in Fishbowl, but true outsource manufacturing where you have to use a manufacturer order. <clears throat> I'm going to show you how to get everything set up right so it'll work. So first of all, we're at the chart of accounts. You could be in QuickBooks Online, QuickBooks Desktop, doesn't matter. What we need is a clearing account. Uh, it's up to you whether you want to make it an, uh, an expense clearing account or a COGS clearing account. Um, doesn't matter to me. I think that is kind of personal preference in regards to your own personal company's workflow and what you need. So we're gonna come here, create a new account, and I'm gonna make it an expense. So I'll put it on the bottom of the PL, and I'm gonna call it outsourced, um, outsourced manufacturing clearing. Now this is something you may have to do when you purchase Fishbowl and start using it is adjust and modify your chart of accounts to play nice and work well with Fishbowl. So this is just one example of something you should do if you do outsource manufacturing is create an outsourced clearing account. Another thing that you could do as well is on your items list create a part if it makes sense in your workflow to manually create the bills and to, to manually create the bill from the fabricator or the manufacturer. Um, if you would prefer to enter the bill into QuickBooks when you get it from the manufacturer, then I recommend you create a new item in QuickBooks that is a service type item that would represent um, the fabrication. I'll just use a general term here, fabrication and map it to that clearing account, the outsourced manufacturing clearing account, okay? So this is an item that you can put on. So if you decide to manually enter the bill, or excuse me, the bill in QuickBooks, create a service type part, call it fabrication, but map it to your outsourced manufacturing clearing account. <clears throat> that way when you enter the bill, it'll debit the clearing account and credit payables. And it looks like I blundered on the spelling, so I'm gonna fix that before it drives me nuts. Oh, doesn't like that. Let's just abbreviate it. There we go, we'll just abbreviate that so it doesn't drive us crazy. So we've got the outsourced manufacturing clearing account set up. Now in Fishbowl, when we make a change to our chart of accounts, the easiest way to pull it over is to go to accounting, accounting integration, accounts, and import. So we won't be able to assign our outsourced service type part in Fishbowl to that account until we do this, until we pull this in. Okay, now that we've pulled that in, we can go over to our parts. I'm going to go to materials, parts, and pull up our service type parts. We've got a service type part for coding, and we're going to map that to our outsourced manufacturing clearing account. We're gonna map hard coding to our outsourced manufacturing clearing account. It looks like anything that's a service is going to be done outside, right? So painting is an outside service, engraving an outside service. These ones, coding service, yeah. And we want to just focus on the outsourced ones. The outsourced ones are the ones that have the dollar symbol. So if it has a dollar symbol, then the unit of measure should be dollar. So if this is how you set up an outsourced service. This is the best way that I've found that works the best and has been accepted and tested and proven by my clients of what works well. So I've got this pressure treating, this paint, and this uh, and this hard coat. So these three are outsourced services. I can tell because the unit of measure is dollar, and we want each one of these mapped to um, 
outsource manufacturing, the outsource manufacturing clearing account. Okay, we've got that. So once we have the outsourced um, part number set up as a service type part, all right, it's a service type part. It's got a, a dollar unit of measure and one dollar as the standard cost map to the outsource manufacturing clearing account in QuickBooks. We can do the next thing. The next thing in order to get this set up so it works like a well-oiled machine on a day-to-day -day basis, we need a address under the company. So I'm, I'm gonna set this fabricator up as if they're part of our company, okay? So I'm gonna go to our company screen under setup and create a new address under the address tab right here. I'm gonna click new address. We'll just call this fabricator. Um, I don't know, call it Joe's fabricator, just so you can see. Uh, one, two, three um, street in Outtown, uh, Illinois. I'll just make up some bogus zip code. But then here, we should have a location group for this fabricator. So we're gonna go set that up. Um, for now, I'm just gonna grab the one on top and come back and change it. <clears throat> so let's go to the location group section, location group, click new, and here is Joe's fabricator. All right, I just kept it simple. That's their name, so why get crazy about it? New location groups will not be available in the client until you restart the server. So I've got to restart the fishbowl server. Creating a new location group is a big deal. So let's restart the fishbowl server. Okay, so the server is now rebooted. We're back and we're going to go back to the company screen, back to addresses, find Joe's Fabricator, and assign them to Joe's Fabricator. So we've got Joe's Fabricator set up as a company address and set up as a location group, okay? So <clears throat> we set up service type item. We created a outsource manufacturing clearing account in QuickBooks. One thing that I kind of skipped over, but you'll probably need to do, is go to the unit of measure screen and create a unit of measure called dollar. Uh, if you remember, we had this unit of measure called dollar right here. So before this video, I already had this set up. It's just a unit of measure called dollar. And that's the unit of measure we used when we created the service type item. Um, I actually created the service type item in another video. Uh, it's the, the bill of material video. I just did it on the fly as I was creating the bill of material. I created the service type item. You don't have to do it. Um, always in any specific order, but those are all the things you need to do. Create the unit of measure, create the chart of uh, account, account the, the general ledger account, um, create the service type item with, the, with that unit of measure, map to that general ledger account, um, create a location group for the fabricator. And then you'll see in another video I did, create the bill of material. So I created this bill of material that has pressure treating on it. And then there's another bill of material that I was playing around with. <clears throat> Never fully complete it, but we can add uh, a bolt to this. And let's say that this one gets, gets hard coded. Let's say we add a bolt and then instead of pressure treating, this one's going to get hard coding and we'll click next and finish. But then, oh, I did it again. I can't uh, record myself and do this at the same time. Batch add, not finish good, raw good. Click next, okay. Let's put the bolt on here and the hard coding. So the idea behind this is they're gonna put a bolt and hard code it all together. And that's why we couldn't use the outsource purchase order because we're sending multiple items out and getting one item back. <clears throat> and then let's say they charge us uh, $1.26 to hard coat this. So we could just say $1.26 right there, 
All right, that's where you put it. It's on the bill of material. That's where you put the charge that the vendor is going to charge you. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I think we may have forgotten one more thing on the location group, the Joe's Fabricator location group. We need to make sure that we give ourselves user rights to this location group. So whatever user you are, I'm logged in as admin, so it doesn't matter, but um, notice the users are assigned to the location groups. So, so all right. So this video showed you how to get everything set up and prepared so you can use Fishbowl for outsource manufacturing. I have another video that I recorded before this one that was the bill of material video to show you how to create an outsource bill of material. The next video, I'm going to show you how to create an outsource manufacturer order where all of this comes together and you see it in action. You see why we had to do all this to make it happen. See you in the next video. Go ahead and comment below if you have any questions. Love to love to hear your comments. Um, or tell us how it went. If you tried this out and it went well for you, tell us about your experience. That'd be great. And be sure to subscribe to see more videos like this.